Okay, so the goblet squat is my favorite way of teaching anyone how to squat appropriately. Someone who gets a goblet squat nailed down transitions really well into back squats, front squats, and every other squat variation on earth. We have Dan John to thank for the popularization of the goblet squat. Now the goblet part of it just refers to how we hold the weight. So Fiona is just gonna hold it up here underneath her chin. You can do this with a dumbbell, with a kettlebell, with a child, with anything you like. I prefer a dumbbell for the most part. Getting underneath this bit makes it much, much easier to hold as it gets heavier when compared to something like a kettlebell. Okay, so the first thing Fiona's gonna do is just go through a squat pattern for me. And I'm gonna get her to, first of all, pause just down here. So the first thing we're looking at that she's doing really nicely is that the knee tracks in line with the middle toe. Okay? That means it's not drifting inwards, so collapse your knees together. They're not falling inwards. They're pulled out, and as they are pulled out, they're pulled out by the deeper lying hip musculature, the deeper lying glute muscles, pull your legs apart and externally rotate them slightly. So when the knees roll in, these can't fire up properly. So if you're trying to get a good arse, make sure you squat with your knees out a little bit. So they should track in line with the foot. You can actually take this too far and really push them crazy wide. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but almost no one actually can. So the cue knees out works nicely for most people. As she comes down again, they're just suffer. Comes down again. Okay. We're going to think about sliding the elbow just inside the knee. That bit. There we go. You're trying to squat as low as you possibly can before you lose that spine position. We're going to take a look at that side on in a moment. We're first, just going to finish off these things through here. Stand up. So we've covered the knee, let's talk about the foot position. You'll hear different things regarding a squat as to what you should do with the feet. Really, anything from about dead straight, so you make a dead straight, to something like a 15 to 20 degree turnout works just fine for most people. The problem tends to happen when we go to the extremes, and the easiest way of, yeah, exactly, and we can demonstrate why that is the case with something I haven't made for you to do yet, which should be quite funny to make her do. So if she goes for feet normal, Okay, just want you to squat down, stay down there. I'm gonna try and pull her knees together, and she's not gonna let me. Okay, ready? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, we're gonna do that. Okay. okay, she's pretty strong, right? I couldn't, and I was really trying, I couldn't move her knees in. Try this with someone you know if you don't believe me on this. Here's where the fun part comes. So she's now gonna turn the feet out like a duck like she was before. She's gonna go down to the same bit, and this time, I'm gonna try and pull her knees in, and I want you to see the difference. So, go down. Here we go. <laughs> there you go. Okay, relax for a second. So the reason that happened is the hip joint, we touched on it before, those deeper line glute muscles, externally rotate, rotate their angles, and pull the knees apart. They can't contribute to the stability of the hip when the foot is already doing that for us. It's already fully contracted, which means it doesn't provide any extra stability as we go through the movement. When the feet is forward or a little bit of a turnout, it can externally rotate and contract and give us some torque in the hip, provide some stability in the hip, and we can see the difference then when someone goes down as to how strong they are in the bottom. So the foot position, anywhere from straight to a bit of a turnout is absolutely fine. Just don't go crazy. The squat is about movement of the hip, the knee, and the ankle without movement anywhere else, which means in this case, without movement from the spine. So I want Fiona to sit down into this squat position. As far as she can go before we start to lose this, so we can actually start to lose this fraction. So just come up here and lift the chest a little. There, right? Okay, so the depth we get to is going to be different for everyone. It's going to be a pain to make a hold this for a second. Based on things like the length of the femur. If our femur is longer, this angle changes. Okay? If the tibia is longer, this angle changes, and then this angle changes. So body shape and types affect the depth that you will be able to get to in your squat before you start to lose position. This means there is not one universal depth that everyone will be able to achieve. The rule is, you go as low as you can before... Up a tiny bit. Not that top. There you go. Knees out. Just do it. Just do it. There we go. Before we lose this spine position, so she's going to come up again. And now she's just going to go for a few reps. I want her to focus on going slowly through the negative, through the descent. So she's going to go nice and controlled. So she should be able to... Perfect. And then up. Pause at any point. 
that slow, deliberate movement allows her the, uh, the, the chance to adjust if she needs to. Again, just like we talked about in the RDL, we can use a mirror to the side of us to look and check that position. Don't just take your brain's assumption that it's in the right place. If you're learning this, there's a good chance you're not in the right place. One of the differences person to person that we just touched on with those limb lengths was the length of the tibia, the length of this shin bone here. Now, some people aren't gonna be able to get that low. A lot of folks think this is due to tight ankles, and it might be, but it's more commonly an issue with just having short tibias and relatively long femurs. If you struggle to get really low, a, a fix you can play with is just sliding a couple of plates underneath the heels, okay? We're just elevating the feet slightly, or the heel in particular slightly. What that does is artificially lengthen the floor to the knee, okay? So it gives you a slight longer shin. And what you'll see as Fiona squats down now is she's much more upright in this position than we saw in the other one. So she goes again. Yeah, lovely. And that's not because we've made her more flexible, it's because we've changed the core level. It's because we've changed this leg, which means the femur can sit lower relative to the knee now, and that's also can stay much more upright than when these weren't there. So if she now stands up, I'm gonna pull these out from underneath her heels. She's gonna do the exact same thing again. And you'll see the difference in the position right there and then. 